Hi, I'm Chase with Houston Frogs. Today I'm going to be talking to you about one of the most asked questions about dart frogs. Can you mix species? Uh, now before I start with that, you can see I have some little tanks in front of me. I'm going to have another video that's going to be talking about the space requirements and the environment for a dart frog. Uh, but I want to give a little disclaimer that these are just for display purposes. These are what we use for the shows to show our little froglets. But we don't keep them in these all the time. We actually have really nice grow outs for them, which they're all behind me. Uh, but I want to show you some examples of some common dart frogs. And I want to explain to you why, well, two big reasons that you should not mix dart frogs. Now, you've probably heard about do not mix because of interbreeding. Now, that's true, but the thing is, is there's some species that are not going to be interbreeding. Uh, it's not just the interbreeding that's a huge issue, but that is a big issue. One of the main reasons I tell people not to mix dart frog species is because in the wild, not only are these species normally not found together, but if you were to have two of these species together, oftentimes they will fight with each other over territory. Uh, certain species are a lot more docile, some species are a lot more territorial than others. For instance, Leucamellas, which I have some fine spot Leucamellas here, are very docile dart frogs. You can actually put them in large groups as long as you have enough space for them, of course, and they'll do very well as a communal frog. Same thing with Terribilis, same thing with uh, Galax. A lot of these frogs are communal. However, when you get into species like the Tinctorus, for instance, uh, again, species like Azurius, like Cobalts, like the Powder Blues we have here, like Patricias we have here. A lot of those species are very territorial. And when they get older, it's actually best to have them as a pair. Uh, sometimes you can have three to four individuals if you have a large enough setup. And if they're grown uh, together as froglets, and if when they become full grown, they don't start to fight. But there have been a lot of instances of having, for instance, uh, several Azurius in a tank and one will bully another one and it'll stop eating, it'll start losing weight, and they'll die. Uh, they can very easily do that to other species. If you were to put in a Azurius with a Leucamella, for instance, or Azurius with one of the Aratus types, uh, then a lot of times that Azurius is going to be the one to bully the other frog when they're grown. And that frog's going to stop eating, it's going to get stressed out, and it's going to die. So one of the main reasons not to mix dart frogs is because oftentimes it's to the detriment of the health of the animal. Uh, I know that you see all these pretty colors. We want to have all these mixed pretty colors together. And unfortunately, we have a lot of instances of zoos and aquariums that give this image of mixing all these dart frogs together. Unfortunately, you don't see all the dart frogs that die because of that. You don't see uh, a lot of the negative consequences. It's all for show. And actually, if you do see an aquarium or a zoo doing that, you should write to them and let them know not to do that. Um, now, we've talked about the aggression that dart frogs can display toward each other, and that being one of the main reasons not to mix them. But let's go into the conservation side, because that's another issue. If you have two species that are similar, like for instance, two different Aratus or two different Tinctoris, and if they start to breed together, then you have a hybrid species. There's actually a lot of species that have gone extinct in the wild because they've hybridized. And what you have to think about is that going extinct means that that original species is no longer around. A lot of these species are endangered in the wild. Their habitat is threatened. Um, sometimes uh, you even have species that, for instance, the strawberry dart frog, because of tourism, little kids would go out and they would catch these little frogs, they would take them, have tourists pay them to take their picture with them, and they just throw away the frogs at the end of the day, and most of these frogs would end up dying. Uh, a lot of these species are threatened, on the verge of extinction, and we need to figure out a way to conserve these species. If we breed these in captivity and mainline, and maintain pure bloodlines, then one day if those species do go extinct, we've had them preserved in the hobby. Another thing too is keeping the bloodlines pure. Uh, poaching has always been a big issue for animals. And fortunately, dart frogs, just like anything else, exotic birds, snakes, lizards, 
there's always be an issue with poaching. But if we maintain pure bloodlines, and if we populate these species, have a lot of them in the hobby, you know, the more of them there are in the hobby, the cheaper the price is. Azurius used to be about $200 a piece. Now you can buy them easily for $50. The reason for that is because there's actually more in the hobby than there are in the wild. If you take a frog and you breed it out in the hobby and you maintain this species of frog that collectors want and they become more and more populous, the price drops and it becomes where it's not even profitable for people to go out and poach them anymore. Because why are they going to go out and poach a frog they can only sell for $50 when they can go out and poach something else they can sell for $2,000? Um, so because of those reasons to maintain the proper bloodlines, uh, to keep from having hybridization of these species, uh, and to prevent the dart frogs from dying in our habitats from aggression of one species to another, we shouldn't be mixing species. And if you're somebody who's wanting to keep dart frogs as pets, then I highly recommend that you keep different tanks. Uh, that's what all of us do. We'll have maybe racks, and we'll have four, five, six tanks on that rack. And I guarantee you it's just as easy to take care of six tanks as it is one tank. Even if you have um, all these tanks without a misting system, it takes you hardly any time each week to miss them. Uh, if you set them up with an auto-misting system, that takes all the effort out of it. And you only have to make maybe, what, two or three more fly cultures. So please do the responsible thing. Don't mix dart frog species. Keep them separate and save the hobby. Thank you.